Good morning, oh, good afternoon, good day, everyone. I'm not sure when you'll watch this. My name is Mary Ann, and I'm recording what I hope will be an interesting uh, conversation, except it'll be one-sided because you're not here in talking, but I wish you were. I'm going to ask you questions anyway, and you can answer them, talk to your teacher about some of the things that we talk about, um, that I talk about. So this is a performance. This is something live that I'm doing, and I want to talk about performances. And I'm Mary Ann. I teach at the Allegro School of Music quite happily. Um, we're on Zoom now. I think I'll be on Zoom for a long time, but it, it's really kind of fun to be home, isn't it? And there's my piano. I used to have a great big one. Now I only have a big one for real performances at the university or elsewhere. Um, that my subject today is performances. The skills that we need to have a performance, the different kinds of performance. What kind of notes do we make to ourselves before a performance? And what kind of notes do we make after or during? Some ideas, some ideas. Your teacher probably has more ideas. You may have more ideas. We all have different ideas. There are a lot of ideas out there about performing and how to be good. And I don't know if I can pause. Can I pause? Yes. Um, so I'd like to start with the most common reason that we all play is that we heard a performance. Someone played an instrument and we went, oh! I want to play that instrument. Or in some cases, as mine, there's a picture of me as a little girl and I have my hands, I mean really little, like six months old, I have my hands on the piano like that. I think I just loved the sound of the piano. Do you love the sound of your instrument too? I bet you do. Singers have instruments, you know, their voices. It's very interesting how it all fits together. So we hear the sounds and we, we enjoy certain sounds and we decide we want to study that instrument. Now, some people never get a teacher. They're not lucky enough to have a teacher. Some people have teachers. And sometimes before you get a teacher, you try to find a song. And you take it to the teacher and that's a performance. And you take it to the teacher and <clears throat> the teacher says, oh, well, this and that. And you start to wonder, did I do that wrong? but maybe not. So one song that's very common that beginners learn is of course, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That comes after Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary Had a Little Lamb on the piano. Often we play it like that when we're first starting. When we learn to read the music and we learn something called a half note that has two we can read that on the music and and the teacher says oh please hold that half note and so then we start to be aware of how we can make things better how do you make it better and when you hold that half note it's really lovely isn't it I you know that, that makes it richer Mary had and you can do lots of different things with it you can tell stories. Telling stories in your music is one of the best things ever, I think. For a particular story that I like with, with that song is that you can play it high. Mary had a little bird. And low, Mary had a dinosaur. And as you do these things, you're creating a performance performance for yourself first, a story that you like, and then you create a performance for your teacher. Your teacher might have improvements to your performance. Not that it wasn't already wonderful, but there are things that teachers know that you don't know yet. Like, I'm learning to cook, and you know, there are certainly things that I can learn from people who cook a lot that <laughs> that help me and make better, I can make better things. So when you play for your teacher, you try to do as your teacher says. I once had a teacher, 
I could show you the music. She marked everything in, in bright red that was wrong. So here's a page, just a random page, and you can see she was very upset if I did something wrong. See that star? Oh my goodness, I must have missed that a thousand times. Fascinating. It made me very aware if I missed something, and it, that actually made me nervous. We can be nervous trying to get things right the way our teacher says, but usually the teacher is encouraging, and if you miss it more than once, she tries or he tries to find a reason that will help you, help you get it better. Nowadays, we can listen, of course, to YouTubes and get the performances in our ears so we have a sense of what, what, what's good and what isn't good and as we play. So those are two examples. I don't know if you realize, I have a, at least I have a little outline. This is a live performance, but a little planned. Um, the first thing we have is a story for me. So it all starts with yourself, what your instrument is and what you like about the things that you can do on your instrument, whether you're singing or playing or blowing. <laughs> <laughs> like people blow instruments. <laughs> you get different inspirations from your instrument as well. So it starts with you and the story you're telling. What is the tone that you like the most? What are the kinds of sounds that you like the most? I think that's where the real true performing begins. It's it's not something that goes out to people all the time. It's something that starts here. Then you take it to a teacher and you learn things about what the composer wanted. Now, of course, if you made the song up, <laughs> well, if you made the song up, yeah, so then you're the composer. And um, But sometimes if you take a song you wrote to a teacher or someone who knows about writing songs or listening to music, they can say something. They can say something really useful that will help your song along. Um, sometimes a song can be so boring and repetitive that really the teacher can point that out. You know, that's just you doing the same thing over and over and over. Of course, some people did the same thing over and over and it worked. Do you know what I mean? Well, Sometimes I would say, do you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I don't mean to be too silly. Of course, we all know that, and that's a very repetitive little ditty. Ditty, it's a motive. And Beethoven turns it into something quite exciting. Everyone has different goals when they have a, a piece in mind that they want to create or play or recreate. Many people talk about performing as recreating. One of my favorite performances of the Beethoven Sonata Opus 27, number two, the goal was not to create a lot of emotion. The goal was not to be soft and feathery and all that kind of thing. The goal was to be even, and it came out really well. Everyone was entranced. You'll hear that performance many, that piece, many different ways. So people play it. <gasps> and they play it all kinds of different ways. So Beethoven, Opus 27, number two. See how many different ways you can imagine that piece. Find a YouTube and listen to it. I, I would like to send you some YouTubes to listen to. I'm creating a list of recordings that I think are pertain to the subject that I'm bringing up. But I don't know quite how to do that. I have to ask the directors to add that to the email where this link will come. I think Josh, Josh knows how to do that. He knows everything. Um, so after you play things for your teacher, and you have your own goal, and then you, you add your teacher's goal and what the composer wanted, and that, that was how she was writing those red marks. The composer said to do this. You must do this. She always called us darling. And the next thing to do is, well, maybe you give a home recital. 
My mother loved it if I played at home. She would ask me, different pieces had different qualities to her than they did to me. So at home, she, there was a watery piece. A watery piece, a piece that reminded her of water. She would, oh, play the watery one, honey, I'm so tired. And she would sit in her chair. And I think that's a very useful activity, very useful when you play your music a lot and you can have a quality for it that other people hear that you didn't think of, right? I never thought of it as watery music. I thought of it as the really hard piece in, in well, I don't even know what key it was, you know? It's a really hard piece. It had lots of flats and I had to pay attention to where everything was and my thumb had to be on the black keys. And I think that your teacher has stories like that pieces that they thought, wow, they were just so hard. There was no possible imagination for it until playing it at home brought out the imagination of someone, someone in the household. Sometimes it's fun to learn the favorite songs of someone in the household and perform them after you've learned them. Keep it kind of a secret. Give them a little concert, their birthday, learn happy birthday perform it. This is the home environment. And when you're in the home environment, it can be very useful to think more about what you like about the song and what you think your family or friends or people in that environment like about the song and not exactly what the composer, well, you know, what would the judge say? What would my teacher say if I didn't hold that note long enough? You don't want to have those I don't want to say negative. It's not exactly negative. You want to try to get it correct. But if you haven't quite gotten it, mastered it, you don't want to be sitting there saying, oh, that was awful, that was awful, because I missed a note. I didn't hold that two counts like teacher wanted me to. Teacher will understand and know that it takes time to get everything just so. I think there's a, there's a Kipling poem, maybe just so, something just so. I wish you were here. What are your favorite songs on your instrument? Many people stop right there in the home circle. And there's a, a, a an adjudication that I do or have done. Um, and it, it, it it's one of the places I learned this. You start with yourself and then you have your home circle and then you might have a school circle. You might play at school. That's a bit more of a public performance. You might play for your music teacher at school or a talent show. That's often the first time that we get to play. Have you been in a talent show? Um, of course, all this is preparation. As you go through And you keep doing these things for a few years. And then your teacher says, you know, you're really good. Why don't you play for a judge? What kinds of things would a judge look for? Well, a judge is going to sit there with the music. Maybe there's money on the line. You might get a scholarship to a school or a camp or just a scholarship. Or maybe it's your test for the music ladder and your teachers blah, judge, right? So your teacher has the music right in front of them and they, they can see everything. And that's the point where you have to really know your piece so well. And all those things come so naturally that it's there. You can do it. You can do it. But sometimes you can't, and sometimes a little note slips here and there. But you've done such a good job of telling your story. Your story is the most important thing. It's more important than the notes and the little mistakes that you might make. The story that you tell when you play a dance is a dance story. Everybody come dance with me. I'm, you know, it's so hard to do this without playing a little bit. Everybody knows this one, right? Well, it's a dance. Everybody dance with me. Right? 
sing with me. Sing my favorite song, Old MacDonald. Sing a mia caro. Sing with me. Old Dolce, you know, anyway. Um, so when you're playing for a judge, it's a different, it's a different story. But you can start doing that even when you're nine or ten, maybe even five. I've I've known five-year-olds that played for a judge because they really knew their songs. They don't have to be really hard songs to to be able to play for a judge and win a prize. What happens is you play your song a hundred times and you know your song and you know what to do. And playing for the judge is practice. It's practice playing in front of someone. Practice playing, practice performing, practice letting someone see your story. Then after you've really gotten there with that, the performance of the recital, the big recital on the big stage with the big piano or the big sound system, and the big drum set, and everything wonderful in the back up there, or maybe you're, yeah. Then that's a really exciting event. And then you're really happy that you learned everything so well and you can play everything so well. Um, and everything sounds different when you're there. So while you're doing that, you, the note to yourself is, oh, my story sounds really different. If you can, you try to warm up and imagine what it's going to be like, your story. Think about the important points of your story. These are the notes you can say to yourself before you start to play. Oh, where, what's my story here? How, what am I doing? What do I want people to enjoy here? Or be sad? Am I going to make them cry? Maybe it's a really sad song and everyone's going to cry. Oh, I don't like crying. But there are sad songs and I do play them and I'm sure you do. And it's good to cry sometimes. When things happen that are sad, we should cry and that's what the sad music is for. And learning to perform sad music is part of being able to play. Music gives us that opportunity to tell the story of happy or sad. Or dancing. Or all sorts of things, right? <laughs> or mad. <laughs> I don't like being mad either. But there are mad songs. That, well, that's another song that Beethoven wrote, right? Same. Rage over a lost penny. I don't know what kind of angry songs you have, but that's one of his. Funny. Rage over a lost penny. The very hard song. Very hard song. Um, and when you get to that performance, sometimes people will say, oh, you made a mistake. I hear that a lot. People who don't know anything about music or have trouble expressing their feelings, I think, the only way they know to say that they listen to you is, oh, you made a mistake. Well, hopefully you know better. You're the performer. You have the story in you. And my goodness, if you played 99 notes correctly and beautifully and wonderfully and told a terrific story and made everyone laugh or cry or do something, and they, they, they clap like that because it was really something. The story was really something. And then somebody says, you made a mistake. Well, that just tells you that they weren't sure what to say. Hopefully, everyone knows something better to say. <gasps> and they can see the story and find the story. And that's the real effort of being an audience. So that's notes after the performance. So you give yourself notes while you're playing about your story, how it's coming off, remembering it, feeling it, giving it, you know, give it your all. You give it your all on stage. Something special happens when you're in that big setting, and, and, and that's exciting. And then afterward, most of us can make the mistake of saying, I made so many mistakes, or I made a mistake, or I did this, or I wanted to do that and I didn't, I forgot. I wanted to do this and I forgot, or I didn't do this, or this happened, or that happened. Somebody wiggled in the middle of my piece and I didn't know what to do next, so I had to go back. There can be a lot of that. But that 
has nothing to do with your story. And if you tell your story and your story comes to people, then you have done a performance. I hope your performances from the recital um, on Zoom were happy and successful, even if it just showed, well, not just, even, even if your purpose, now the purpose of a, of, a, of a recital with a teacher can also be to show your improvement. Here's my story. Look, last, last time I played this, and this time I can play different things. It shows your improvement when you have a good story. Well, I hope you can find your stories in your music and think about your stories when you're performing. That's what makes a wonderful performance, I think. Now, of course, your teachers might have other ideas. But I hope you will use this little video as a diving board. I wish I had a diving board. Dive in and think about performing. Think about making up a home recital. Make everybody happy. Bake cookies and make lemonade and have a home recital and tell your stories. Bye for now. I hope I see you again another time.